Well, good afternoon, everyone. Please stand as Professor Austin Lobo offers the invocation, and then please remain standing for the national anthem. Professor Lobo. Let us bow our heads and put ourselves into a moment of silence. God of all creation, we come before you today to give you honor and praise. You are worthy of praise. You are the source of all that is good. You are the source of all our blessings. You have lavished upon each of us life, wisdom, beauty, and hope for the future. The ability to love, to forgive, and to share the blessings given to us with others. Thank you for everything. Look with favor on everyone gathered here. The students, the members of the staff, the faculty, the community, and especially those whom we honor today in this ceremony. Give them patience, determination, compassion, leadership, and a desire to excel. May they respond by developing your gifts to distinction. We pray that these men and women may rededicate themselves to continual growth and the sharing of their talents with others. And finally, we pray that your love will continue to sustain all of us in peace and joy today and through all the days of our lives. Amen. Please do be seated. Well, welcome friends to the 2023 birthday convocation. We come together today to honor and celebrate some truly terrific individuals and their contributions to Washington College. There is such a wonderful spirit around this community. And one way that I most often see that reflected back is through service to others. We're fortunate to study, to work, and to learn in an environment that places a high value on that community, and kindness as well, and also looking always for ways to make this campus 
and this world a better place. And those enduring values are really what, are going to, what we're gonna highlight and celebrate in this program today when we share more with you about today's richly deserving honorees. We're joined today by many special guests seated here on stage with me, and we will introduce everyone officially as we move through the program. Thank you all for being here with us and for being a part of this long-standing, wonderful Washington College tradition. The first guest that I have the honor to introduce and invite forward is one of Washington College's young citizen leaders, Alex May. She will be graduating in the class of 2023 quite soon. As president of the SGA, Alex will deliver greetings on behalf of the student body. Alex. Good afternoon, students, faculty, staff, and distinguished guests. My name is Alex May, and I am super thankful to be speaking before you all today, welcoming you to George Washington's birthday convocation. As a senior class finishes out our last semester, I wanted to express my personal thanks to both my peers and our institution. I am extremely grateful for the opportunity to have met all my classmates, and I look forward to honoring all of our successes and accomplishments these next few months. I am thankful for the chance to learn in and out of the classroom and the opportunity to make an impact on Washington College alongside some of my closest friends. I would like to express my absolute gratitude to all of our amazing professors and for your continual support towards our learning journey and community. Um, on a personal note, I would also like to specifically thank the business management and psychology departments for uh, inspiring us every day in the classroom. As I reflect on my personal time as president of the Student Government Association, I am ultimately left with feelings of gratitude. It has been so meaningful uh, to support the school and watch our amazing ideas and projects that have started from the beginning of this year. Whether it was watching Jonah plan our amazing spirit weeks, Sayed present our bike share app, or reading through the countless amazing Elm articles, it has been an honor to watch our campus thrive this past year. Additionally, I would like to thank uh, the SGA Executive Board for our strong team spirit this past year and for your dedication to the school. You have been my rock and it has been awesome being able to work with some of the most motivated and innovative students this year. It is bittersweet to end this position, but I am excited to see what the next team accomplishes and how you continue to grow and adjust our school even more. The class of 2024, 2025, and 2026 have some amazing and passionate leaders, and I am proud to say that Washington College is being left in awesome hands. Thank you again for allowing me to speak today and for listening to me express my sincerest thanks to everyone who has made this last year remarkable. Thank you for all of the amazing administrators and faculty members that have listened to student voices and helped push for change we see today. Most importantly, thank you to Washington College for giving me the best four years of my life. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alex, for those great words. Now I'd like everyone to welcome me. I'm sorry, well, you can welcome me if you'd like to. <laughs> um, really, what I'd appreciate you if, if you would join me in welcoming Mr. Stephen Golding, who brings greetings from the Board of Visitors and Governors. He's a 1972 graduate and a Washington College parent as well. Steve has worked in higher education financial management for the past 30 years. He was a senior advisor to the president at Ohio University and executive in residence at the Voinovich School of Leadership and Public Affairs at that same institution. Steve was first elected as an alumni member of the Board of Visitors and Governors in the year 2003, and he stepped into the role of board chair in September 2018. Please welcome Mr. Stephen Golding. With those years, it's time to retire, I think. Uh, on behalf of the Washington College Board of Visitors and Governors, it is my honor to offer both greetings to the entire community and congratulations to all our convocation honorees. This event is always cause for celebration and restoring the in-person version of convocation certainly puts an exclamation point on this afternoon. It's wonderful to be back together as we are about to hear. Today's award winners represent a sampling 
of how the college stood strong despite the never-ending challenges presented over these last few years. In the face of these challenges, this community found ways to rise to the occasion and even change for the better. That was no accident. It was due to the people that make up the very heart of Washington College, and it is an honor to be able to represent all the members of the Board of Visitors and Governors here today to acknowledge and thank each of you for the extraordinary service that you made to the community, that made the community strong. Congratulations and thank you all. Thank you very much, Steve. At this time, I would like to invite Dr. Michael Harvey, Provost and Dean, to recognize our long-term service awardees and to present the Cromwell Award for Innovation in Teaching. Dr. Harvey. Thank you, President Sosalski. Uh, I just want to say two, two things about the, the two previous speakers. Um, Steve Golding has been a great board chair at a very difficult time. And one thing I want to say about him, how devoted he has been to shared governance of this, uh, of this college. And there's a lot of staff and a lot of faculty here who recognize that we've put in a lot of work on getting together and talking about shared governance, uh, empowering the people who work here, listening to the people who work here. And a lot of the credit for that goes to Steve, who was determined that that work go forward. So I just want to recognize Steve for really being committed to a shared governance uh, model of the college. Thank you, Steve. And I just want to say a word about Alex May. Um, she just told us she's had the best four years of her life. She's about to have a great next three years. She's going off to law school. She's trying to figure out whether it's going to be you know, Drexel or Catholic. Uh, or Maryland uh, or American, but she knows she's going to law school. So it's really exciting to see what our students go off. Uh, let's have a round of applause for Alex May heading off to law school. <laughs> 46 faculty and staff are being recognized this year for reaching milestone anniversaries. If we add up the years of service between them, we are celebrating a combined 530 years of Washington College know-how, know heart, and passion for this place and the students who come here. Colleagues, as I read your names, please stand and remain standing with your cohort. Audience, please hold your applause until I have called all the names for each milestone year. Celebrating five years of service, Georgina Bliss. I, I, there you go. Hey, Georgina. It's really hard to see. Uh, I'll just presume people are standing, sorry. Uh, Catherine Charles. Sarah Clark DeReza. Nanette Cooley. Pamela Cowart Rickman. Karen Ahrensbeck. Kelsha Gilbert, Trish Hamilton, Roy Kesey, Ann Keatsman, Sarah Lyle, Mala Misra, Thomas Riley, Sherry Spray, Carolyn Thompson, Benjamin Tillman, Jennifer Wannett, James Wilson, Tiffany Worcester. <laughs> Celebrating 10 years of service, Antone Black, Bradley Cotton, Roy Dunchy, Jennifer Hutton, John Leupold, Julie Markin, Lisa Marks, Keith Van Zandt. <laughs> the years roll on, celebrating 15 years of service. Jennifer Benson, Roshira Kane, Bokambi Kane, Cynthia Gibson, Darius Jones, J. 
Jennifer Kitzmarchik, Karen Saunders, Brian Scott, Tracy Yanakis. <laughs> Celebrating 20 years of service, Brian Crossley, Keila Daniels, Adam Goodhart, Michelle Johnson, Carl Kem, Andrew Oros, Susan Vowles. <laughs> Celebrating 25 years of service. Two wonderful individuals, Martin Connaughton and Austin Lobo. And celebrating 30 years of service, the one and only Sarah Fireherm. Thank you all for your unwavering commitment to Washington College. In honor of the fifth anniversary of the dedication of the Cromwell Center for Teaching and Learning, and in recognition of the continued generosity of the center's founding benefactors, George and Barbara Cromwell, we announced the, we announced the creation of the Cromwell Award for Innovation in Teaching. We are so pleased to have Barbara Cromwell in the audience today. I believe that is correct. Welcome, Mrs. Barbara. Are you out there? <laughs> I had my office in Cromwell until I moved over to Bunting. It's a wonderful building. The building and the Cromwell Center made possible by the generosity uh, of Barbara and her commitment to this college. Washington College is an institution that prides itself on the quality of its teaching. As any good teacher knows, teaching excellence is not a one-time achievement. It is an ongoing process that requires faculty members to continue to develop their skills and constantly rethink their own approaches to teaching and learning. The Cromwell Center for Teaching and Learning seeks to sustain and encourage Washington College's instructors on this journey with an award for innovation in teaching. This honor, awarded annually, recognizes achievements in the use of new instructional technologies the use of traditional technologies in creative ways, novel approaches to instruction, and new ways to engage students in the learning process. As such, the award seeks to reward instructors who have a particularly powerful positive impact on student learning, student readiness, and student retention. This year's recipient is Dylan Paulson, Associate Professor of Mathematics and Chair of Mathematics and Computer Science. Dylan Paulson has been researching and implementing an alternative approach to assessment in his classes known as specifications-based grading, which aims to create a more supportive, inclusive, and collaborative space and a more effective space for all students to pursue mathematical inquiry. Common STEM grading systems typically involve three to four timed tests throughout a semester that account for a large part of a student's final grade. You probably remember the experience. Using this grading scheme during much of his teaching career, Professor Paulson witnessed its unfortunate side effects. Just prior to these major assessments, attendance at office hours swells, panic grows, and stress builds. It's not clear what those tests do in terms of long-term students' learning. Professor Paulson believes that successful learning depends on a cycle of trying, getting some things wrong, receiving helpful feedback, and trying again. It's amazing how much wise teaching sounds like the simple common sense that we as parents and in many other roles sort of figure out eventually, right? The typical one-shot high-stakes assessments of the timed tests do not allow for this learning process to fully take place. 
Dylan began implementing specifications-based grading, which clearly lists learning objectives. If student work demonstrates strong knowledge of the learning objective, students receive credit for understanding it and, moving, and move on. If, the, uh, if their work doesn't demonstrate that, they receive feedback and the opportunity for additional work on a similar problem. Grades are determined not by a percentage of points accumulated, but by how many learning objectives a student understands. This, sh this shifts the focus from chasing points to seeking deeper understanding of the course material. Dylan enjoys designing courses that create a collaborative learning environment where students feel safe and can grow and learn. All of us in this room have experienced math anxiety might wish we had a math teacher like Dylan Polson in our past. He especially enjoys mentoring senior capstone projects, dedicating time to talk about the cool mathematics a student discovered and to help them turn their ideas into something everyone can read and enjoy. Dylan sees math as one of the great collective human projects, much like art with a long history that contains beautiful work. One of his goals is to welcome all students into the mathematical community and create an environment where they can appreciate this beauty. Marshall DeProspo, will you assist me? Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. Congratulations. And I think there should be a photograph of us. Thank you, Barry. Thank you, President. The Joseph L. Holt Distinguished Service Award recognizes exceptional performance, leadership, and service by any employee at Washington College. The recipients of this award have a record of exemplary performance and distinctive contributions. They have improved the college's programs and campus activities and have shown outstanding commitment to the campus as a whole. I am delighted to announce the 5 2023 Joseph L. Holt Distinguished Service Award recipients. Professor Aaron Lampman. Please join me. To say that Aaron Lampin cares deeply about Washington College barely scratches the surface. An associate professor of anthropology, he is an archetypal, ar archetypal Washington College professor, always putting his students and their best interests first. Aaron is a guide in the classroom and the field and a tremendous supporter of students through their academic journeys. Even among our many amazing and dedicated faculty, he stands out for his commitment to our students' well-being and success. When a vacancy unexpectedly opened in the office of the provost in July of 2021, Professor Lampman stepped forward to become the Dean of Student Achievement and Success, the inaugural Dean of Student Achievement and Success, I might add. Right away, he was plunged into a critical situation. Through his dedication, hard work, and a commitment that no matter what, he would not let our students down. He learned systems, sorted through records, forged new connections, and solved the problem. Since 2015, Professor Lampman has served as curator of the Cater Society of Junior Fellows, where he supports the research and growth of some of Washington College's strongest students. Thanks to his leadership, the college added new staff to support student academic success, a critical component of student well-being. One of his most significant and lasting accomplishments, a result of his deeply collaborative approach, is his contribution to creating a shared culture of supporting student growth and success through communication, partnership, and trust. Aaron is also a dedicated and student-centered faculty member who teaches a popular anthropology class and leads a student trip to Cuba that considers the country's architecture, culture, cuisine, and people to give the students the experience of a lifetime. A scholar, a mentor, and a traveler, 
Aaron Lampin is a citizen of the world who shares his passion for learning, teaching, and exploring with his students every day. Aaron, I was going to say, please come forward to receive your award, but you are here to receive your <laughs> award. Uh, Marshall DeProsimo, would you please assist me? Congratulations, Dr. Lampin. Next, I would like to invite Ms. Lisa Moody to join me at the podium. Lisa Moody is an advocate, a mentor, a campus leader, a volunteer, an educator, and a respected colleague who is dedicated to Washington College students like no other. Lisa, who developed the college's employer relations program, works to support students through self-discovery and career exploration. She graciously served as interim director of the Career Center in 2016 and she shepherded the unit through the transition to new and successful leadership. Throughout her tenure, she has been committed to the mission of Washington College, and she has upheld the values of the liberal arts experience. Lisa has served in many capacities on our campus, from the liaison to the Kent County Chamber of Commerce, and a member of the Finance and Benefits Committee, to the advisor for the Black Student Union, and the newly formed Women in Business Club. I think that's their theme song. <laughs> Lisa consistently serves as an exemplary role model for the entire campus community. Her continuing support of students of color, first generation students, LGBTQ, and other marginalized groups is unwavering. She easily connects with all students, but she serves a critical role in helping students who need additional support to navigate their Washington College experience. Her generous spirit extends beyond the college as well. Whether she is hosting students for holiday dinners, serving as a mentor, or giving back to the local Chestertown community as a volunteer for Bible school and other service projects, Lisa is generous in sharing her gifts and talents with those around her. And Siri agrees. <laughs> A guiding light in peer-to-peer -peer student and affinity group mentoring interactions, Lisa deftly channels her caring and supportive nature to positively affect others around her. Blending grace and dignity with firm and guiding wisdom, she is a dedicated educator and colleague who brings a quick sense of humor to her team. Lisa helps many students to better understand career development, providing direction towards the pathway that reflects each student's individual passion. Working with her means you learn and you laugh along the way. And for that, we are all grateful each and every day. So Lisa, congratulations to you. And Marshall DeProsper, thank you. Now I'd like to ask Elizabeth Seidel to join me at the podium. She may be unable to attend. She may have hurt her back yesterday. Oh no, okay. I understand that she may be unwell today. I will read her citation nonetheless. It's unusual to walk around Chestertown without running into someone who knows Liz Seidel. She has spent the last 24 years in dedicated service to Washington College and to the greater Chestertown community. She has played a significant role in ongoing research and field projects as director of the Past is Present Archaeology Lab and was a key member in the development of an indigenous cultural landscape study for the Sassafras River Chester River watershed. Students seek out her advice and company even when they are not actively involved in the Past is Present initiative 
or associated programs. Working constantly to make sure that each student and community member that comes to the lab feels the love and passion she has for archaeology. Liz has created an inviting and safe environment for learning, where all are invited to participate in ongoing projects. She has instilled high standards of professionalism in the Past is Present program through her personal initiative and enthusiasm for the field of archaeology. In addition to her mentorship of students, Liz has helped advance Washington College's goals through her engagement in the Chestertown community and various historical and preservation groups in surrounding counties. She has taught the members of these different communities about the value of cultural resources on their properties and sites, as well as helped to manage them when necessary through archeological investigations. The time and attention Liz devotes to her work and students exemplified the values of Washington College. Liz, ah, uh, here it is, Liz unfortunately injured her back while out in the field with students yesterday, and so she cannot be here to accept this award. But we do wish her a speedy recovery and congratulations. Now I would like Amy Sign to please join me at the podium. Hey there. Amy Sign has professionalized her position of director of residential life in many ways bringing best practices to the department and focusing on preparing our student residential assistants for success in their campus positions and in life after graduation. Her efforts improve the daily lives of all of Washington College's students. Amy's dedication to the college is evident through her participation on a range of committees as well. She recently served as chair of the staff council and currently serves as its parliamentarian. She is also an academic team mentor and serves on the Educational Incentive Program Team, which provides scholarships to students. Her efforts extend well beyond the Washington College campus, reinforcing the connection between the school and the community. Amy is a member of the Board of Trustees for the Kent County Public Library and Senior Housing Officer Engagement Co-Chair of the Mid-Atlantic Association of Colleges and Universities Housing Officers. She also volunteers with Rebuilding Together Kent County, which provides home repairs to individuals and families in need. Amy has dedicated her career to education and development and continues to drive initiatives that make Washington College a better place for our students. She's available to students 24 hours a day, providing assistance with navigating college life, helping to ensure they have what they need to be successful, and being there when they need someone to talk to. That is her raison d'etre, helping students and encouraging them to be and to do their best. Amy's commitment to the college and to the town of Chestertown is a true inspiration to the entire Washington College community. And we are truly thankful to her for her constant energy, great ideas, and enthusiasm. Amy, congratulations to you, well deserved. Next, I would like to invite Sharon Sledge to join me at the podium. Sharon Sledge has served Washington College for more than 20 years, assuming the role of Chief Academic Technology Officer in the year 2014. Her commitment to best practices has informed her work to the great advantage of Washington College. This was most evident in March of 2020. Remember March of 2020? That was when the COVID-19 pandemic forced classes to move suddenly online. Faculty and students were able to adapt to the unexpected conditions with greater ease than at most peer institutions thanks to Sharon's foresight years before then. 
Not only had she built a flexible and responsive academic technology team, Sharon developed an instructional continuity plan in the year 2015, which was executed quickly when the pandemic arrived. Student achievement depends on our ability to innovate and integrate technology in meaningful ways. To do so, high functioning teams need to rely on one another and Sharon has made that possible as a hands-on leader who builds a sense of teamwork and trust. She sees herself as a servant leader, valuing her staff as talented professionals. She consistently shines a light on individual team members and lifts up their work. Under her leadership, the academic technology team is widely recognized on campus for its stellar service and support, as well as for its innovation and cutting edge work. Sharon excels as a leader and as a manager of people understanding and responding to the unique characteristics of each person on her team, while instilling a set of common values and expectations. Her leadership has prepared Washington College to be nimble and responsive in an ever-changing environment, something we desperately have needed in recent years. So Sharon, I'd like to congratulate you on your achievements, and we are so proud to have you as part of our team. So once again, congratulations to our five Joseph L. Holt Distinguished Service Award recipients. At this time, I would like to introduce another of our honored guests, the chair of the Washington College Alumni Board, Jennifer Svela, for the class of 2000, she is from the class of 2003, to present the award that, the awards that will be honoring our alumni. Jen. The Washington College Alumni Service Award was created in 1986 to formally recognize dedicated alumni. It is bestowed annually on an alumnus who has given outstanding and continued support to the college and or the Alumni Association. He or she has been instrumental in encouraging prospective students to apply to Washington College, has made continued financial contributions, has been willing to give time and energy as class agent, alumni alliance member, Board of Visitors and Governors member, alumni chapter officer, or contributor on special projects sponsored by the college or alumni association. The recipient is Eleanor Shriver McGee, class of 1993. As a student athlete, Eleanor Shriver McGee pushed herself and her teammates in every game and every practice. As a head women's lacrosse and soccer coach, she taught her players to do the same. As an alumna, she has continued to live with that unreserved commitment. Before joining Austin Pharmacy and Medical Supply in March 2022, Eleanor ran ESM Goodworks, a philanthropy consulting firm she founded in 2013. She has also served in many volunteer roles including as Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees for the Maryland Center for History and Culture. In her service to her alma mater, Eleanor has wholeheartedly given her time, talent, and treasure. As a former alumni chair of the Washington College Chop Tank Alumni Chapter, she organized events and brought the college to its neighboring counties on the Eastern Shore. She opened her home on numerous occasions in support of Washington College, welcoming alumni, prospective students and faculty. She serves on the, Washington, the George Washington Legacy Society and is a watershed program volunteer. As a longtime member of the Hall of Fame committee, Eleanor's infectious enthusiasm and unstoppable energy were ever evident at every meeting. With her institutional knowledge, she has helped the committee keep its traditions alive while updating the experience to appeal to all generations. When it was time for a new women's varsity athletic field re renovation, 
Eleanor gave generously and encouraged her family and friends to do the same. Shriver Field is now part of the Washington College Athletic Complex. She had many wins in that field, including a marriage proposal. We are happy Eleanor chose our team. Her ongoing efforts have ensured Washington College students continue to have everything they need to achieve their goals. You already forward for your award. Thank Thank you, Jen, and congratulations, Eleanor. Well deserved. The President's Medal at Washington College was introduced to recognize the accomplishments of an individual or organization that has made significant contributions to the advancement of Washington College and or our region. This year, we have two President's Medal recipients. W.W. Buck Duncan and Rosemary Ramsey Granillo. In a time when consensus can be hard to find, everyone respects, admires, and yes, just plain likes Buck Duncan, president of the Midshore Community Foundation. With his genial personality and approachability, Buck has fostered unprecedented growth and success for the organization that he leads, which has led to sub substantive financial support for individuals and nonprofit organizations in Kent County and throughout the Midshore region. Kent County and organizations that serve our county's residents, including students at Washington College, benefit from the generous spirit and magnanimous leadership that Buck fosters at Midshore. Early in the COVID pandemic, Buck recognized the growing pressures being faced by area nonprofits because of increased demand for services and declining resources due to canceled fundraising events and other lost revenue. He moved quickly and led efforts that secured more than $1.6 million in special COVID funding. He and his colleagues simplified the foundation's normal grant request process and they ramped up the work of the grants committee. As a result, the Midshore Community Foundation provided grants to 99 organizations, including to Washington College and many other nonprofits in Kent County during that really crucial period. Buck's leadership and insight were evident when he identified and addressed an ongoing shortage of healthcare professionals in our region. He guided the foundation at that time to initiate a special fund for those pursuing degrees in healthcare professions, which is now granted $230,000 to 33 recipients in the five Midshore counties. Beyond building the foundation's well-earned reputation as a source of financial support, Buck has brought together a diverse board of directors, enhancing the well-being of our five counties. The board's advisory capacity, interests, and fundraising and management acumen are of incredible value to the countless small nonprofits that partner with the Midshore Community Foundation each and every year. Buck, if you're with us today, please come forward to receive your award. Rosie Ramsey Granillo makes connections. She lifts people up and builds inclusive spaces where everyone can be heard, helping to find points of consensus where change can be made. 
She provides counsel and support to many local organizations focused on nearly every kind of social mission, the arts, education, health, the environment, and family welfare. In the words of one Washington College faculty member who nominated her for this honor, Rosie is the community's social justice first responder. Rosie serves as director of the Kent County Local Management Board, a state-funded office that coordinates local and state agencies to better serve youth and families. In that role, she is responsible for maintaining the hub for community conversations, collaboration, and work aimed at improving people's lives. But much of the zeal and impact for which she is known by people and organizations throughout the region goes beyond just her professional responsibilities. Rosie not only exemplifies the active citizen who makes the lives of her neighbors better through civic engagement, she also teaches others to do the same. She has given guest lectures and co-facilitated classes at our college, and she helps community members find their own ways to improve our shared society. In addition to supporting classes at the college, Rosie has connected students with community leaders and internships aligned with their social justice interests, coordinated volunteer opportunities, and supported Washington students' projects in areas ranging from music to racial justice. Rosie is eminently deserving of this award for her work improving the quality of life for all of us at Washington College in Chestertown and throughout Kent County. We are grateful for her selfless and invaluable efforts on behalf of the entire community. Rosie, please come forward to receive your President's Medal. So once again, to Buck Duncan and Rosie Ramsey Grineau, congratulations. It is now my privilege to invite Chair Golding to read the mandamus for the honorary degree today. Thank you, President Sosolsky. It having been certified by the Honors and Awards Committee of the Visitors and Governors of Washington College that uh, President Tory Merton McClure is of acknowledged eminence and distinction, has made worthwhile and noteworthy contributions to our society in the field of laws, and is therefore worthy to receive the highest honors. You are hereby authorized and directed in accordance with the ordinance to that effect to confer at the public convocation ceremony on February 24th, 2023, to President Tory Merton McClure, honoris causa, the degree of Doctor of Laws. President McClure, will you please join me at the lectern as I read your citation? Tori Murden McClure is an explorer, author, and president of Spalding University. She has earned a bachelor's degree from Smith College, a master of divinity from Harvard University, and a law degree from the University of Louisville, as well as a master of fine arts in writing from Spalding University. But that's just part of her story. President McClure was the first woman and first American to row solo across the Atlantic Ocean, having accomplished the feat in 1999 after 81 days at sea. Her memoir, entitled A Pearl in the Storm, How I Found My Heart in the Middle of the Ocean, details her life and journey across the Atlantic and served as the basis for a stage musical called Row, which premiered in 2021. 
A decade before crossing the Atlantic, she became the first woman and first American to ski the geographic South Pole during a 50-day, 750-mile expedition. President McClure has worked as a chaplain at Boston City Hospital, as the director of a women's shelter for homeless women in Louisville, and as a, as a policy assistant in the Louisville Mayor's Office, as well as the first full-time employee of the Muhammad Ali Center. She is a former board chair of the National Outdoor Leadership School and is a former vice chair and interim chair of the NCAA Board of Governors, the top governing body in collegiate athletics. Under her leadership, Spalding University was certified as the world's first compassionate university in 2011. As a liberal arts college graduate, collegiate varsity athlete, and former chair of the NCAA Division III President's Council, President McClure embodies the values of a Washington College liberal arts education and those that NCAA strives to instill in all of its student athletes. She explores new challenges and surrounds herself with diverse perspectives to better address the complex issues of our time. She leads by example and pushes herself to achieve excellence in all of her endeavors. In celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Title IX legislation that brought equity and opportunity for women athletes and transformed the world of women's sports, we recognize today President McClure's contributions to the advancement of women and female student athletes. Marshall DeProspo, will you please assist me with the diploma and the hood? By virtue of the authority vested in me by the visitors and governors of Washington College and by the state of Maryland, I hereby confer upon you the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities pertaining thereto. And it is now my great privilege to invite President McClure to offer her address today. So Mr. President, um, we were in the hallway discussing what one learns in 13 years as serving as a university president. And what one learns is occasionally you step to the podium with a speech that doesn't fit the audience <laughs> and that you need to punt. And when this happens, be bold, be courageous, and punt. Um, I uh, had a privilege today of um, speaking to some student athletes at lunchtime, and I kept saying things like, you know, well, later I'm going to talk about this, and later I'm going to talk about that. They kept looking at each other like, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be there. I've written a speech for students. OK, so I will give you the highlights that I think might be most appropriate to you. I will finish as I intended to, because it's smart aleck and it's a good way to end, but I'm gonna skip a lot of this. Um, I was starting out with all the different times rowers rescued George Washington. <laughs> there were quite a few of them. I will not read them all to you. Um, there is a serious mo moment that I will absolutely stick with. Uh, I wish to express my gratitude, and I feel like I should turn and face the faculty. I wish to express my gratitude to each and every, every member of this campus community who is engaged with Washington College's History Project and its three-part mission to illuminate George Washington's and George Washington College's historical connection with enslavement and race, to acknowledge this history through public statements and symbolic actions and to work for change on your campus and in your campus culture in response to this historical legacy. I am grateful for this work because the institution I serve, Spalding University, and the, orders of, the order of sisters who founded Spalding were among the first institutional leaders 
to seek to make amends for their role in a similar shared history. As women, the Sisters of Charity who founded Spalding University were not permitted to own property, so they formed a corporation, and it was the corporation that owned the land, and it was the corporation that loaned, owned a several human beings that came with the land. So I can't tell you how many institutions of higher education run away from this history, hide from this history, duck from this history, and I want to thank you for your moral gravitas in facing this history. So I left that part in. Um, from there, I was going to just tell a couple stories, uh, one of which I was going to illuminate that our students have the ability to follow particular landmarks. And with it, I brought props. <laughs> when I skied across Antarctica to the South Pole, there were uh, other Americans and other women. We all touched the pole at the same time so we could each claim to have been the first. Um, <laughs> And uh, I had gotten a little sloppy about pointing that out, and I was speaking in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, uh, a few months ago, and one of my expedition mates was there. I was like, what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> so there were seven days in Antarctica when we traveled in whiteout conditions. Now, you don't go anywhere in Antarctica without your glacier glasses on, because you can go snow blind, and that's really very bad. And uh, there were seven days when we traveled in whiteout conditions. Whiteouts happen when the clouds come down on the surface of the snow. Up is white, down is white, left is white, right is white, and you literally cannot see the ground in front of you. How you navigate in a whiteout is you send the youngest. I was young then. Remember the expedition team out off into the mist. And if you're out in the mist, you start stumbling around looking like you've been drinking things that you shouldn't drink at university campuses. But anyway, how you navigate is you take your compass, it's a standard mountaineering compass. It has a sighting mirror, also known as an idiot's compass, because the mirror shows you who is lost. <laughs> and you take your compass, and you look for any landmark due south. And I was really excited this day, because I had a landmark 180 degrees due south. Skied right for it, skied right for it, skied right for it. Tori, you're veering right, said Colonel Ron Milnarik of the United States Air Force. It was. He was my second that, that day, and it was his job to correct any deviations in my course. I checked my compass. I knew how to use a compass by Harry God. I was a graduate of the National Outdoor Leadership School. <laughs> I checked my compass. No, my landmark was 180 degrees due south. Skied right for it, skied right for it, skied right for it. Tori, you're very right. No, I'm not. I was young and perfect. I checked my landmark. <laughs> it was due south. Skied right for it, skied right for it, skied right for it. Tori, you're veering right. That's it. He's a dead man. I'm going to have to kill him. I never veer right. I'm a, I'm a real Democrat. I don't veer right. <laughs> I turned to give Colonel Ron Milnark of the United States Air Force my very best murder death stare. And when I did that, I realized my landmark off in the mist was a spot of frost on my glasses. <laughs> don't you hate it when that happens? In recent years, I've had to change how I tell that story because uh, to young audiences, when I say, I'm a real Democrat, I don't veer right, you can watch members of the audience flip the light switch and stop listening. At the end, I say, I married a Republican. I do my penance every day. <laughs> um, but I encourage them that we have to talk to each other across boundaries and across borders. I was going to talk a bit about Title IX. It's a little boring. And with the changes to name, image, and likeness, I'm not sure where Title IX is headed. That's a whole other conversation. If you think rowing across the ocean is difficult, try being the interim chair of the Board of Governors of the NCAA football season 2020. <laughs> there are a whole bunch of commissioners really unhappy about this woman leading a Division III school deciding on whether they were going to have football or not. So I will end as I would have end, ended if there were a group of students in front of me. Socrates said, all I know is that I know nothing. But I want to finish with some platitudes, one or two of which you might remember. If I was really wise, I wouldn't do this. But I will finish with the top 10 things I think I know. Number one, silence is golden. 
And if silence should fail you, duct tape is silver. <laughs> Number two, if a carrot is big enough, you can use it as a stick. Number three, roadblocks only block the road. They do not block the grass, the water, or the way less traveled roadblocks only block the road. Number four, it is never too late to have a happy childhood. I have had several and I have many more planned. <laughs> or the corollary, I may grow old, but I will never be old enough to know better. Number five, learn from the mistakes of others. You cannot live long enough to make them all yourselves. Or the corollary, it is difficult to become old and wise if you are not first young and stupid. There are gradations of stupid, I love to tell undergraduates. Stupid level one gets you hurt. Stupid level two gets other people hurt. Stupid level three involves police and lawyers and you might never own your own home. <laughs> I encourage them to avoid all gradations of stupid that begin with a phrase, hey, hold my beer and watch this. <laughs> Number six, the best things in life cannot be seen, heard, touched, smelled, or tasted. The best things in life are felt in the heart and in the mind. Number seven, do not burn bridges. Just loosen the bolts a little each day. <laughs> Number eight, if you have to keep something you are doing a secret, then perhaps you should not be doing it. Number nine is an important one for college presidents. Don't take yourself too seriously. No one else does. <laughs> Number 10, do not believe everything you think. Or as Socrates said, all I know is that I know nothing. I want to thank the, the board here. I want to thank the faculty and staff who serve this institution with such distinction. Um, yesterday, I was at Smith College, my undergrad, and I blamed them for everything that ever got me into trouble. I bought a pair of cross-country skis from a graduating senior for $25. I wasn't very good at turning, so trees were a problem. <laughs> Skied 750 miles across Antarctica, no trees, didn't have to turn. <laughs> I learned to row at Smith College on Paradise Pond, lots of shallow spots, had to turn all the time. Rode across the pond, no shallow spots, didn't have to turn. I became a university president because of Smith College. I served on the board, danger, danger, danger to the board members. Uh, President Ruth Simmons left Smith to go to Brown. I got to serve on the presidential search committee. The committee was chaired by a woman named Pat McPherson, who had led Bren Mawr for uh, several decades. Pat, Pat is a goddess of vast empire. And um, as we were leaving one afternoon, we uh, shared a ride to Bradley Airport and she invited me to come into the VIP lounge and have a glass of wine. So she, she waited till my guard was down and she said, have you ever thought about becoming a college or university president? I did one of these. And I babbled incoherently about how I'd be completely un unqualified for that. And then she set the hook. She said, well, it's not for everyone. It really is quite difficult. <laughs> President McClure, you have honored us by allowing us to honor you and to hear your words of wisdom and good humor today. We truly appreciate you. As we conclude this afternoon's convocation, I want to extend an invitation to all of you with us today to join us for a reception in the Underwood lobby just outside those doors where you will have a chance to meet and congratulate each of our honorees today. And now as we close this program, Will the audience please stand for the alma mater? The words are printed on page 15 of your program. Following the alma mater, please remain standing for the benediction and the academic recession.
Let us pray. Loving God, bless all of us gathered here today as we leave this auditorium together in friendship and fellowship. Thank you for the blessings of our individual and collective gifts. Place in our hearts the desire to make a difference to our families, our community, our country, and the many cultures and peoples worldwide. Give us balance in times of distraction and uncertainty. Help us to move towards our goals with determination and always with an abundance of respect and consideration for others. Amen. <laughs>